Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome to a live Tuesday teaching tips and today I'm going to be looking at this idea of assessment. Now over here in the UK we're beginning to come to the end of term, it's nearly the end of our summer term and uh, lots of things are going on for students including um, exams for a lot of them. So I've got three pieces of advice both for people uh, who've got for teachers who've got students doing exams and for teachers who have got students not doing exams. So if your student is doing an exam in the next few weeks, two or three weeks, I really, really strongly recommend that you download from either Trinity or ABRSN websites the criteria for the exam. So I've got the marking criteria here for ABRSM and it's really useful for you and the pupil to look through these and to play the pieces, to play the scales and things and get the student to actually see if they can give themselves the mark because that will show them where they are and actually it will, sh it will help them to understand, especially with your guidance, what they need to do to improve it that little bit more. The thing is with our pieces, with our scales, we're always in a state of improvement, aren't we? Nothing is ever finished. So it's just getting through except, well, that's how it is now. And now what could you do? And what else could you do to it? So that's if you're doing an exam. Get hold of the marking criteria, all available on websites. Now, for other students, um, I would suggest that you need to be doing, we need to be doing some sort of assessment just to see where they are towards the end of this term. And with my students at the moment, especially my younger beginners, I'm doing um, an assessment this week and I'm doing some as well next week. And I just start off the lesson with it. And what I've done this week is I'm doing some um, rhythm work. I want them to show me how independent they are at their rhythm, at their rhythm skills. So I wanted them, I want them to show me that they can tap a rhythm independently. They know how to say using rhythm language or metrical counting, that they can do that. I want to know that they can write down a rhythm they hear. And I want to know that they can compose their own rhythms. And composition really is probably the, the ultimate that we're all aiming for here. So what I was doing yesterday, and I will do today as well, is I had four flashcards. We've got four simple little flashcards here. And I gave them to the pupil and I said, can you put them in any order you like? It's completely their choice, any order you like. And, um, and then I want you to clap and tap the rhythm. So I give them the six. I let them have a little practice and then I just remind them to give um, either count themselves in or give an off we go and then tap their rhythms. And then at the end of that, I might say, and how was that? And what would you give yourself out of 10? So three might be mm, still some work to do. Six is well on the way. Seven is well on the way. Eight and above. Awesome. Or epic, as one of my students said yesterday. Epic is his favourite word. So that would be the first part, whether or not they can clap and tap these rhythms, or tap and count these rhythms, I should say. The second part is, they go onto the floor, and I give them some of my lollipop sticks. Now you've seen these before, there's another Tuesday teaching mm. tip with these. I give them some lollipop sticks, and um, I ask them to listen to me tap a rhythm, and then they have to write it with a lollipop stick. So I might do it like this. I might say, I'm going to tap your rhythm, I'd like you to tap it back to me and say the rhythm language and then I'll tap it again and then I want you to write it. So I give them at least two chances to listen to it. So I might then say, off I go. And they have to tap back to me. Ta, ta, te, te, ta. Or one, two, three and four. And then I'll tap it one more time. And then I say, and now can you write it? And I might do that two or three times. And by the third time, I would just say, now, this time you're only going to hear it once. You need to say it in your thinking voice to yourself and then write it. So the first time I see what they understand or don't is through what they've written down there. And of course, I had classic situation yesterday with one of my students in that they, they write two lots of tetes, two lots of quavers for a tete. So they've written tete, tete, tete. Yeah. 
um, so that that's always an interesting one and it just shows up a little uh, a little area I need to work on in, in my teaching with them so the third thing that I do with them so so far they've tapped and counted and then they've listened and written and the third thing is I say to them now could you write for me a four beat or an eight beat rhythm and I will tell them which one according to their their standard a four beat or an eight beat rhythm and I give them a couple of minutes to work it out and then I ask them to tap it and then I say okay now I'm going to tap I'm going to tap what you've written and of course most of them get that right for those that don't get it right I tap what they've written rather than what they think they've written and then I say well was that the same or different so all the time I'm asking them questions, I'm asking them to reflect on their learning, on what it is they think they've got, and so that I can better understand their skills. So, and then all the time I'll be asking them to, to, to assess themselves, give them sort of, um, are they awesome, are they epic, um, or not. Um, next week I shall be doing, with my students, I shall be doing some probably some work on pitch, or for others, I might be doing some work on dynamics and tempo markings and stuff like that. And in this way, I have a really good picture by the end of the term where they are at this moment in time. So that will help me with my planning for next term. So there you go. Three tips to help you with assessment. If you've got a, uh, an exam pupil, get hold of the marking criteria. If you're uh, not doing an exam with the pupil, then do take time to assess them in some shape or form and involve them in their assessment as well. Okay, that's it. Bye for now.